The second book of Samuel, session 24. Now, this is all about Absalom stealing the love of the ten tribes, stealing King David's people, preventing King David's people to go to King David, but taking King David's people for himself, seducing them, charming them, deceiving them, and then end up destroying. And we can just as well see Chapter 15 of 2 Samuel is all about Satan stealing God's people, the Antichrist stealing Yeshua, the son of David's people, the Antichrist standing in the place, the false son of David standing in the place of the true son of David, stealing the ten lost tribes, taking the lost sheep, being a wolf in sheep's clothing. There is I don't think, in my opinion, anybody else more than Absalom, who is a wolf in sheep's clothing, who represents all the false prophets and um, their father, Satan, in this world, who comes amongst the sheep as wolves and they just want to kill and destroy and eat up because they are greedy. They want for themselves. Whereas King David, whereas God and his son cares about the sheep, they want to look after the sheep. And why are the sheep such idiots to go after Absalom and not to trust King David? Why are the people of this world such idiots to go after the Antichrist and not trust God himself? It came to pass in verse 1, after this, after what? After that, the king kissed his son Absalom, thinking that he can trust him that Absalom prepared for himself chariots and horses and 50 men to run before him. So Absalom rose up early and stood beside the way of the gate. And it was so that when any man that had a controversy came to the king, King David, for judgment, then Absalom called unto him, Hey, you over there! Who's on your way to King David? No, don't go to King David. Come to me. And he said, Hey, hi, friend. Of what city are you? And then the guy would say, Your servant, because he knows Absalom is a prince, your servant is of one of the tribes of Israel. Let's just stop here. First of all, when you read in verse 1, he chose 50 men. What is that prophetically to you? Don't you immediately think about the 50 days, the seven Shabbats, plus the 50th day, seven times seven is 49, plus one is 50, between Bikurim and Shavuot, between the feast of first fruits and where God married his nation Israel at Mount Sinai at that first Shavuot. Doesn't it make you think about the whore of Babylon and the Antichrist who also has a false marriage that is replacing the heavenly, godly, covenantal marriage? Doesn't it make you think of Jubilee? Jubilee is 50 years and a Jubilee year brings freedom. You get your land back, the slaves are set free. There's so many beautiful things in the Torah of God regarding 50 and freedom, and marriage, and Pentecost, and Shavuot, and the Ruach HaKodesh, which is the seal of the covenant on those who are married to God. But here we have Absalom, a false messiah prototype, choosing from all from, from any amount of men that he could have chosen, he chose 50. And for me, that is prophetic because the Antichrist is not going to come like a devil with a fork and two horns on his head. He's going to come in the image of Messiah, as if he is Messiah, as if he fits into the Shavuot covenant picture, doesn't he? And what does he do? He rises up early. You know, the early bird catches the worm. You know, Satan doesn't sleep. He is very cunning Charming, clever, deceiving. He probably rose up early in the Garden of Eden as well to deceive Eve as she was taking a morning stroll with her husband. So he rose up early and he stood beside the way of the gate. Yeshua is the way. Yeshua is the only gate. There is no other entrance but through Yeshua. 
But the enemy climbs over the wall. He doesn't come through the entrance. You know, he, come, he climbs over the wall of the sheepfold to come and destroy the sheep. And that's why Absalom's standing beside the way of the gate. He's not a judge. He's not an, one of the appointed judges. You remember so many times you'll read, for instance, Lot sat in the gate. Boaz, the kingsman redeemer, sat in the gate because these guys were elderly and they were righteous men and they were chosen as judges, righteous judges for the city. But Absalom is not this. He is a false judge. He stands beside the way of the gate. He's beside the true way and the true gate. Looks like the real one. He's standing right there. He calls towards the ten tribes. He doesn't try to deceive Judah. You know the house of Judah, uh, the tribes of Judah and Benjamin? No. He goes specifically after the ten tribes. Why? What is the, the deep significance here? Now, as I shared with you yesterday, the ten tribes are the ones, are the house of Israel that has been divorced by God after the 50 days of Shavuot, after he married Israel. Um, the house of Israel, the ten tribes are divorced. The ten tribes are the most naive the ten tribes not only had one golden calf in the time of Rehoboam, they some had two golden calves. The ten tribes are scattered. Judah has not been scattered. The ten tribes are scattered into the earth, and they are open and um, easy targets for a charming, cunning, deceptive snake, like the Antichrist. Oh, uh, sorry, like Absalom. <laughs> Same thing. So what does Absalom do? He calls them. Where are they on their way? These people that has problems. You go, like in the days of Moses, they went to Moses. Since they had a king, you can come to the king with your problem. Remember the parable Yeshua told about the woman who had a problem um, and there wasn't a fair judge? So she came to the unrighteous judge and she kept on bugging and bugging and bugging him. Um, so you always come to the leader of the city or the land or the country, and you bring your case before him, and then he will make a judgment. Remember, just like the wise woman of Tekoa that came to the king to bring her problem to the king, like we discussed in the previous session. So here the people are coming to King David. We as the ten tribes must return to the kingdom of David, to the God of David, to this kingdom that David represents, which is the united kingdom where God is in control and the son of David rules and reigns, Yeshua. We must return to that covenant. But what do we find as we are turning back to Jerusalem, and we want to go to King David, and we realize, you know, he's our king. He's appointed and anointed by Yahuwah. We want to go to him for judgment. Just like now, the ten tribes scattered in every tribe, nation, and tongue, they are slowly but surely realizing they must turn back to God and to the Son of God, who's called the Son of David who is the true Messiah, who turns us back and restores us back to God. So we turn back to him. And now we are on our way to go and meet with King David. And what do we find along the way? We find a snake in the way. There is Absalom in the way of the gate, or actually not in the way, beside the way. So as you are walking in the way, Remember Paul says in Acts 24, I belong to a cult that you guys call this a cult, but it's called the way. And I believe everything written in the Torah and the prophets of our fathers. I obey that. And this is called the way. And of course, Yeshua is the way because he is the Torah and the prophets that became flesh. So we are, we are walking on the way. And many other lost sheep of the tribe of Israel that Yeshua said he came for is now walking on this way. But Absalom, the Antichrist, Satan, cannot allow this. So he will send these false prophets. He's going to send the Antichrist. He's going to send the beast. 
He's currently sending all these false doctrines. Well, he's been sending it for the last 2,000 years into the church. So the people who want to go to King David, walking on the way, are being called by Absalom. Hey, friend, how are you? You know, you don't expect a friendly guy like that to hurt you. You don't know that he's cunning and deceptive. You know, he's the son of David. He's a prince. And he, of course, wants to help you. He's telling you here that he's going to help you, right? But Absalom is now preventing the people. He is stopping the people to come to King David. Just like Satan is stopping people the way, coming to covenant with, with God, with Yeshua who is represented by King David, the beloved, as we've learned all through Samuel this far. So, so Absalom calls them and says, hey, of, you know, what city are you? If the guy says he is from one of the 10 um, northern tribe cities, then Absalom speaks to him. But if he says, you know, he's, he's, a, he's from Judah, then Absalom, you know, lets him go. Because Absalom in this instance, realize, you know, Judah has their own problems. But here, the Antichrist is specifically focusing on the 10 northern tribes. So if he says, your servant is of one of the tribes of Israel, then Absalom says unto him, see, your matters are good and right. So he's giving him a pat on the back. Well, my friend, this problem that you are bringing, this is a big problem. Shine, poor you. Yes, you need somebody who can judge rightly for you. Your matter is good. Your matter is right. You are correct. So let's say you've got a problem with your neighbor. I'm telling you, you are the one that is right. Don't go to King David. There's no man deputed, you know, um, will you be my deputy like a sheriff has a deputy? There's no man deputed of the king to hear you. He's lying. David is there. King David is there to hear you. Absalom is lying. He's first of all trapping you with a compliment, with flattery. You've got a good case, man. You've got a strong case. But there's nobody here that's going to help you. He's bringing doubt into the minds of Israel that the king of Judah cares about them. Absalom is calling these guys, preventing them to go to King David, stopping them before they go to King David, and then giving them a false alternative, pretending to be a fair judge, pretending to be the judge that they can trust, but he's he's standing beside the way of the gate, calling them like the serpent called to Eve. Hey, Eve, come here. Did God really say? Do you really think David is going to help you? No, 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 no. Absalom said even further, oh, If only I were made a judge in the land, then every man which had any suit or cause might come unto me, and I would do him justice. Hello? Would not David do you justice? Would not King David a man after God's own heart, who is appointed as king and judge and ruler. He, he is the one that you need to come to. Yeshua says in the New Testament, In vain do you worship me, keeping the traditions of man. In vain do you pretend to worship God. Believing God, obeying God, trusting God. But you go to a man. Yeshua says in the New Testament, when there's a dispute between two believing brothers, why would you go to a worldly judge? Why would you go to the evil courts? Why will you go to a corrupt system? You and your brother needs to sort out your stuff. So here, you can hear the echo of Lucifer. 
Oh, if only I could sit on the throne. If only I can rise above the mountain of God, above the stars of God. Oh, if only I can be worshipped. Oh, if only you can make me the judge. I will bring you judge, uh, justice. There's no man in the land that can hear you. I'm telling you, I believe your case. I think your case is strong, but ah, oh, shame, I'm not a judge, so maybe I cannot help you. But if I were made a judge and if I were made king, then I will definitely look after you, my pal. Yeah, ha, I'm sure. So Absalom said, moreover, oh, only if I was a judge, I will do you justice. Corrupt justice, y'all, not, not pure justice. And it was so that when the man that Absalom just flattered and gave compliments to and made false promises to, like some political parties in this country and other countries, this man now turns his loyalty to Absalom because he is flattered. And he's made confident that Absalom will look after him and that Absalom will help him win this court case against his neighbor. So now this man comes closer so that he can bow before the prince, the son of David. But what does Absalom do? The moment the man comes to bow down before him, Absalom put forth his hand and he pulls the man up. So he says, you don't have to bow before me. I'm one of you. I'm your friend. I'll be the kind of king that will not make slaves of you. I don't want you to bow before me. Stand up, man. Be proud. Be my companion, you know. And then he did what? He kissed him. Wow. The kiss of the snake. It's not good. Coming close like Judas Iscariot to kiss Yeshua. But it was the kiss of death, like we discussed yesterday. And the, he only had this opportunity. He only had the ability to stand here beside the gate of Jerusalem as the son of King David, pretending to be a good and a wise judge. He only had this opportunity to kiss with a, the kiss of death, to kiss the ten tribes of Israel and to steal them away from King David. He only had this opportunity because King David kissed him in chapter 14, verse 33. If King David um, dealt with Absalom according to the Torah of Yahuwah, Absalom would never have had this deceitful opportunity. And this is why God's Torah is important. This is why he wants his kingdom to be governed according to his rules. So these kind of snakes can be kept outside. That's why the Torah is a hedge. Jerusalem has walls around her. God says, I am the walls around Jerusalem. I keep the snakes outside. We don't allow the snakes to come inside. When you allow the snake to come inside the Garden of Eden, to come inside the walls of Jerusalem, to sit in the way of the gates of Jerusalem, then you allow that snake to kiss you and you fall in love with that snake. You will follow that snake and you'll be stolen away from King David. And in this manner did Absalom do to all of Israel that came to the king for judgment. And so, you can take a pen and underline this in verse 6. So Absalom stole the hearts of the men of Israel. Wow, this is, this is so prophetic. This is such an end time teaching. This is such a truth that I wish so many of the lost sheep sitting and being deceived by the kisses of the Antichrist that they can hear. 
how how can we get them to hear this? We've got a saying in Afrikaans, stilte voor die storm. It means silence before the storm. Absalom is now silent. He's silently and cunningly doing all his betrayal of his own father, of his own father's kingdom. He's stealing the kingdom away from under King David. Like Lucifer has stolen the kingdom of this world out from under God. Yes, and we've done all the Bible studies why God allowed it. It's not that God is like the this innocent, poor one who's been stolen from. No, because we as humanity have chosen to listen to the serpent instead of to God. God has allowed all this. But yeah, there is silence. There is darkness before the great storm. The serpent you have allowed in your bosom. We've talked about the serpent within the tribe of Judah so many times. In the book of Judges especially, do you remember? Allowing the serpent inside your tent, inside your city, inside your palace, inside your bed. Remember how we've discussed these things. And now the serpent He's not going to lie still. He's going to kiss you. No, no, no. Sorry. He's going to bite you. His kiss is the bite of death. It came to pass after 40 years that Absalom said unto the king. So after 40 years, we know that David ruled for 40 years. Absalom said unto the king, I pray you, let me go and pay my vow, which I have vowed unto Yahuwah in Hebron. For your servant vowed a vow while I was in Geshur in Syria. And I said to Yahuwah, O Yahuwah, if only you will bring me back again indeed to Jerusalem, then I will serve you. Bull dust twang. I want to I say a bad word. What lies. What a hypocrite. What a cunning deceiver. What a betraying, rubbish piece of garbage. Using God, using Yahuwah as an excuse to King David. Misusing, serving God in this world. Oh, I'm a servant of God. I made a promise to God when I was in Geshur, when, where you banished me. I, I made a covenant with Yahuwah that if Yahuwah will bring me back to Jerusalem, then I will serve him. That's how the Antichrist will look to this world. And the people will believe him. The people will say, well done. Oh, you're a servant of Yahuwah. You've come back to Jerusalem. Oh, you're in covenant with Yahuwah. Yes, go ahead. Do whatever you have to do. We trust you. So David trusted him. He even said to him, Shalom, go in peace. So Absalom went in peace and he went to Hebron. And what did he do at Hebron? Did he bring a sacrifice to Yahuwah, as he said? Did he, bring, did he pay his vows that he made to Yahuwah as he lied to King David? No. Look at what he does. Verse 10. But Absalom sent spies throughout all the land, all the tribes of Israel. And he said, so he's now in the northern area, not in Jerusalem. And he's sending his spies, his false prophets, his pastors, his preachers, his teachers, his false indoctrinating Pharisees and Sadducees, um, wolves in sheep's clothing. He sends them out unto the lost sheep. He sends the wolves into the flock of sheep. And then he says, tell them, um, bring, bring this message to all the tribes of Israel. As soon as you hear the what? The sound of the trumpet. Then you will say, Absalom reigns as king in Hebron. What are we waiting for? Are we waiting for the sound of trumpet to tell us our King of Kings and Lord of Lords are returning? 
to come and trample the wrath of God out with his robe dipped in blood, with a two-edged sword coming out of his mouth, to redeem his bride so that she can make herself ready for the supper of the Lamb of God, for the marriage supper, so that we can be, um, our engagement and betrothal can be um, united into a marriage covenant, and the Son of God can sit on the throne of death forever and ever in the um, um, city of David to rule and reign in the millennium? Aren't we waiting for our king to be heralded in with the sound of the trumpets of Yom Teruah? But now the false messiah, he's going to have his own Yom Teruah. He's going to have his own second coming as if he is Yeshua. He's going to have the sound of trumpets that will make the world think, oh, here's the Messiah. He will have a patsy before him, and people will say, oh, okay, there's the Antichrist. And then the sound of the trumpets will come, and oh, here's the true Christ, here's the right Messiah. And now the the spies, you know, all the leaders of the world and the kings of the earth and all the great church leaders and you know all these people that are the puppets of the new world order that are serving Lucifer. They will go throughout all the world and they will promote, there is your king. And if anybody doesn't want to bow before Absalom, he will get killed. If anybody doesn't bow before the beast, he will be killed. Because we know our King David. We know King David who and what and where and how and when he is. We will not bow before Absalom. But the sheep that allows the serpent to deceive them, the sheep that are allowing the serpent to take them out of the way when they were supposed to go to King David, they will follow the Antichrist. That's why the Bible says there will be a great falling away before the end comes. Absalom reigns as king in Hebron, Yah, the false king. Verse 11, and with Absalom went 200 men out of Jerusalem. So what is he taking? He's taking 200 Jews from the house of Judah. But these are not the Jews from the synagogue of Satan. Look at this now. These were called. So he called 200 from Jerusalem, from Judah. They went in their simplicity. They went in innocence. The Bible says in verse 11, they did not know anything. What an amazing fulfillment of what I've been telling you guys for the last, what, 10 years. The house of Judah is innocent, not talking about the Jews from the synagogue of Satan, but the house of Judah is blinded, Romans 11. They are deceived by this false Messiah. They go with him. They will support him. And together you'll have Jew and Gentile in this false restoration of the false kingdom of David going after the Antichrist. But they go in their simplicity. They didn't know. And Absalom sent for Ahithophel, Ahithophel, the Gilonite, who is David's counselor. All right. Now this guy is David's counselor. Supposed to know the truth, supposed to serve King David, but as his name is telling us in the Hebrew, Achi Thophel, Achi is brother. Ne? What is Tafel? Tafel means to smear, to plaster. It is like slime. It is unsavory. It is foolish. It is frivolry. So it's a slimy, um, smearing, foolish brother who's not serving David, but he goes to Absalom because Absalom is calling him. And I'm not going to run too fast forward, but in chapter 17, verse 23, 
Achithophel hangs himself. And we'll see that when Absalom flees away, when King David's true followers pursue him, he also hangs in a tree by that beautiful hair he has. So both these two, who's in conspiracy against King David, the false prophet, the foolish so-called brother, you know, the church is, we were all brothers and sisters. We believe in the same God, Mosne. So the false, foolish, slimy, slithering snake brother, Achithophel, and Absalom the beast, the Antichrist, is in conspiracy against King David. And they both die by hanging. So Absalom sent for Achithophel, the Gilonite, David's counselor, from his city, even from Gilo, while he offered sacrifices, <laughs> while he's pretending to serve God. And the conspiracy was strong, guys. Look in your Bible, take your pen, underline. I'm called a conspiracy theorist all the time. Shit, guys. Sorry for my French. The conspiracy in this world is so strong. The conspiracy is massive. 200 from the house of Judah and all the 10 tribes from the house of Israel is following after Absalom, Abba my Shalom, but it's a false Abba and a false Shalom, following after the counselor, the foolish brother Achitophel. The conspiracy is so huge. The spies are sent all throughout the land to convince the world Absalom is king. Yes, I'm a conspiracy theorist. Yes, I'm one of those that will not bow before Absalom. Yes, I'm one of those that might have to flee into the wilderness with King David. Who knows? We'll see that in the next chapter, in the next session. I'm a conspiracy realist. I'm realistically Breaking open all these conspiracies for you, line by line, precept upon precept, verse upon verse. Please share these Bible studies to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. I am begging you for the sake of God and for his son. The conspiracy was strong, for the people increased continually, exponentially, they increased with Absalom. Absalom is a pretend believer. Achithophel, pretend believer. They use religion as a smokescreen. They use even the Messianic religion. They are creeping into Messianic circles because they need to deceive the end-day saints who keep the Torah and have the prophecy and testimony of Yeshua. The church is, is deceived. All the other religions are deceived. The deception, allowing the serpent inside your bosom, the deception will be here, in our midst, where these guys are sacrificing. These guys are following Shavuot, the 50 men that runs before Absalom. These guys are, sh are sounding the trumpets of Yom Teruah, just like the true Messiah. These guys kiss, just like King David. These guys sit in Jerusalem, just like Yeshua. These guys are pretending to be fair judges, just like the judges that God appoint. They pretend to be prophets. They pretend to be kings. And the conspiracy is strong because we are blinded. The ten tribes and the house of Judah are blinded not to see the truth. Conspiracy in Hebrew, is kashar. Kashar means to blind and to bind, to be bound, to be, what is the right word? To be bound in shackles, in prison, in, in like in Egypt, where we were in bondage. The false Messiah will just bind us with all their conspiracies back to bondage. And there came a messenger to David and said, The hearts of the men of Israel are all following after Absalom. We're going to stop here for today.
Tomorrow we will look into how David flees from Jerusalem and the men that went with David and all these beautiful things that we will learn from the kingdom of our King.